Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Um, just before we get started things here, I am planning to do a bit of streaming just on the YouTube platform and try and make it a regular thing, like maybe every Friday. Uh, what I'm going to do is just maybe go through some recorded games just in bulk, so a little bit of a exaggerated or longer session there. Um, we might see if we can get RVA and uh, Raphael to do some 1v1s and maybe we can commentate that as well. Um, but the idea is maybe just like for a set time every Friday or so. Um, I personally don't have a social life anymore because of COVID and I can't imagine a lot of you do too either. So if any of you can join us for that, that would be great. So I'll try and get that streaming on the on the YouTube platform, on the channel there. Um, today I've got a strange game that I seem to have found where they were playing islands or team islands. Which is uh, an interesting map because it's not part of the random map land section that we tend to just do for games. Um, fun now and again, but you know, horribly awful to play again and again and again. But now and again, it's great. Um, crazy map, lots of lots of food in terms of fishing, um, different strategies, and you know, eliminate sort of rushes and stuff. And it's more going to be a game where people are fishing, um, going for fast T three air, um, and doing pressure that way. You can catch your opponents off guard if you manage to transport some land units over. Um, tricky for them to deal with because they, they wouldn't really expect that as such. So to start things off we have some Banthas, there's a couple of Cadus, but there seems to be a lot of Flumps scattered around as well for food. So three Flumps. So there's a decent amount of food to get people in a position where they can get the, uh, the shipyards down and start fishing. I think absolutely every player would want to fish. Um, unless you were fated to maybe share an island like I think these two are. So these two could actually uh, rush each other. Oh wait, no, I can't, I can't, I can't see colours, can I? Hold on. Casual clone, enemy, ally. Yeah, okay, so Raphael and casual clone are on the same island here. Uh, these two are together. And Wind is imprisoned on an island with two people. Yeah, um, these maps don't seem very balanced. Uh, a bit crazy. Some of them are just commenting on how weird the islands are. It's, it's definitely very, very random the way that these are formed. It's quite cool when you get these little islands though that have got resources on them. It's blind random, so it's like... Yeah, it is islands. That's a lot of ore. Nice. Like I would hope that these games tend to go long and you could get to see the, the shipyard techs and the uh, the shipyard sieves come to fruition. See lots of uh, cruisers, long range uh, boats that you just never see in games because, well, there's never usually a lot of water. Um, Kind of slow, you know, in a limited area that you could you could use them with, but they're really good. They've got crazy range. It's like up to sixteen range or something. A bit like a cannon, a cannon that you can move about in the water. Sarve so getting on his flumps here. It looks like he's he's going for the shore fish. When he's got two flumps to eat, has he not found them? I think he's just found them. I'm curious if these guys are going to rush each other. And if Wind's going to rush as well. Wind's doing very well to get through all those flumps and get a, a quick sort of T2 here. He's got Unholy here, and then Unholy's got this evil fellow to back him up. I think Arvia is the only one who's got his own island to himself. Suspicious. So yeah, a little bit of downtime just now. I do expect people just to be like, oh, that's a sentry post. I'm very surprised. I feel like this is a man who wants to know if there's fish or not. <laughs> so he's put the sentry post down. You can see there's some medium fish. So that, that alone is worth going for, right? Look at that. That's like 700 fish. Oh, 
This is where a lot of the high premium fish are, but you've got these uh, OPC killers to compete with. Uh, you don't want that early game when you're uh, fishing. You need to lure them away or something and just sack the boat that you lure it with. But the real prized area is the centre of the map. So you can say the evil could get into that very quickly. Uh, casual clone and particularly Raphael's got very good access. So does RDA. They've got very good access to the center of the, the map where all the fish are. They've got the Gungans there. They'll be getting that shipyard bonus. And they get the cheaper shipyards. You can also make houses in the water. Which is probably very good for this map considering the amount of surface area that you've got. Um, you definitely... I think you probably want to just build all your houses here so you've got room to place your production buildings and such. I think these maps just really heavy, heavily favour going for tech options and tech harass. What I'm particularly fond of is maybe getting like a, a transport and dropping some assault mechs or something like that. Dropping pummels, um, fast T4 air, anything that's going to do shock damage to your opponents. Um, that, that they might not be as prepared for as they should be. Let's see, we get a house there. So just one shipyard just now. I mean, I would, I would particularly look to go two or three shipyards, I think, on a map like this. Because if there's enough fish to sustain it, it's, it's basically like you're adding an extra command center before tech level three for each one. Because it lets you do a division of labor at home where you allocate all your workers that come from your, your actual command centre onto Carbon, Nova, or um, and you can just leave your food to be on the utility trawlers. And that can really give you a huge surge in economy. You can power a very, very heavy uh, Harassi Tech 3 as well, because you could probably throw down and support three, 3 or maybe even 4 um, production buildings. That's the players hitting T2 now. These guys are just sort of... Well, I hope he's got a troop centre down. Wind's doing a nice little wall. I like it. He's got the Nova to help him out here. Those trees. Got the light wall. I hope he does have a, the troop centre, but I don't, I don't really see much troopers. He won't have Mounty Tech either because there wasn't enough uh, nerfs to put down an animal nursery. So I think Wind's pretty pretty good there. Though he, he is fishing, so the troop centre doesn't feel... It's not as heavy as an investment as it would be on a map where you weren't fishing. Um, it shouldn't hold him back too much from getting to T3. Yeah, Raphael's got another shipyard here. It's always a neat little trick to do with the, the power droids. That way you can get more sort of um, depots, as it were, for your utility trawlers to deposit the food. And you can just use the power droid, you know, it's like a fraction of the cost of the power core, to power it and pump out uh, trawlers from it as well. So you maybe want another one here. And that way you can have a much more efficient uh, food gathering system. Are you still on these shore fishes? Likes his diverse food. You can see the casual clone has hit T3. Double air base coming out of them. To be expected, they are in a boo. However, they do get scouted because they share their island with Raphael. So everyone should know that that is coming. A few more farms as well. They're not, they're not keen on uh, fishing. They're my great map for fishing. Because they haven't fished, they've had a, a quicker sort of tech time, but it's not too much faster than uh, Raphael's here. And I would say there is a risk that they do get a outperformed here in the uh, NT3 
economy wise but Marafa is looking to defend himself with air bases when he's behind in the production of said air bases so there's going to be two fighters on him very quickly and then there's going to be four fighters and then it's going to be six fighters it's going to snowball and he's at risk of losing his boats as well he has gotten the, uh, the anti-air destroyer out I think this is maybe a mistake from Kazra clone to go for the boats initially Whereas this area, he's not built a turret. Um, he's going to rally his air here, I imagine, to keep this safe, all his workers. He needs to stabilise and then get a new carbon processor down. And that's a little bit of mismanagement from a casual clone. If they can get onto the new carbon area. I think if, if you're ever in a spot where you've caught your opponent like that, you want to sit on top or at least near their production where you can scout it. And then you try to keep their numbers of fighters down while pushing them off like their, their resources, like their Nova and their carb. Right, he's got a lot of workers there. He just needs to win the trade and then he could get on top of his opponent. He's losing fighters for free though. Oh, this is great trades. Absolutely great trades for Raphael. It's going to help him stabilize. I think these two have just walled. They're not up to much. They're both on the, uh, the fighters as well. Is in holy T3? He is. Not really uh, anything out of him just now. Double air base out of Evo. We know there's going to be an air base out of RB8. That's what he's all about. Boat getting caught there. See that Evo's going to push up onto wind, I think. Harvey's put all these nice little sensor boys around the map though, so you can see the air. Just really clever on a map like this. Giving yourself that sort of that, that vision. If we look at the fog of war, you can see a lot of the center, especially ahead of where his boats are fishing, so he can rush back and defend them if he needs to. Bit of a trade there. Some strikes being rallied from Raphael. Do some damage. Be slightly tricky for uh, Calder Pullen to defend just now until they get a mech destroyer out. You can see some command centers going down though. And then uh, he needs to sort of reposition all his boats as well. He's maybe getting a bit of a a slow down in this uh, economy there. The RVA's probably got the most uh, boats and the most prime fishing real estate. If you look at that. Not so wholly up to now. Still nothing. Right, we'll, we'll check back in there. Is going T4 or something? Is he going for the artillery range? I think he's going T4. Like fast, fast T4. RV pressuring up here onto Evil's boats. Very, very good trade for RV. We lost basically nothing and killed about six, seven fighters. Killed some boats too. There's a real danger for this player because they haven't built any anti-air turrets. Don't want to be losing your air um, and then having like a, a substantial amount of fighters get on top of you. He's going to lose all his boats, he's going to have to put down farms. It's really unfortunate. These strike mechs just try to get in here and be annoying. They're not super effective though because it's not like a whole lot of area for this economy. It's just like two command centers. It's not a huge amount of distance for the mech to try to travel. I think your biggest sort of um, way to play on a map like this, if you share an island with someone, you should be looking to get a forward down and push them out of the surface area of the island and maybe off of a resource or two. Like you, like this ore is obviously up for grabs between these two players. You would want to be grabbing that. I know it's probably uh, Raphael's ore by default in terms of how the map spawns, but. I'd say it's, it's nothing in comparison to how this has spawned. 
So I think a casual went, it'd be uh, in a big advantage. You can see the unholy's hit t4, so he was going for that super fast t4 air. Yeah. Because we had these two tech buildings down. Two air bases, command center. He's doing okay with that. He's going to run out of boats though. Might run out of carb in a bit. Wind try to do some pressure here. Wind's got the four command centers. Try to go T4 himself, is he? Don't know what these workers are up to. These boys are waiting to be paid before they start work on this uh, research center. See that casual clones start to push up with these mech destroyers. Just to be annoying. I'm just going to put the air on top of them. I don't think we've got any uh, air to defend them either. Surprised about that. These fighters out. Yeah, they're going across and bullying wind. We do have a RVA in T4 as well. We might have a bit of an advantage here. Being that he's been building air all this time. I think he's got a better economy as well while the, the boats. He's got those up to advanced fighters. Don't have the armor yet, but they do have the shields. And we can see that evil's gone up to T4 as well. Doesn't quite have his upgrades yet, so he won't want to clash with RVA. A lot of workers going down here for holy. This is very big. He needs to build aqua harvesters right now. He's losing all his carbon workers. Wind perpetually getting bullied by T4 air. The poor Galactic Empire player on an island map. With all these air sieves. Lots of workers going down for Unholy here. Oh, these get caught. RV with the app description, I'm airing them. He absolutely is airing them. So it's like Casual Clone wants to do some sort of cool little push. Is there a power droid marching over here? Yes, there is. It could be pummels or maybe some artillery. I would say pummels in this instance. You can see that Raphael, well it's going to be an AA mobile isn't it? Push up and then maybe some pummels. He's just going for pure air to sort of defend himself from the T4 air I'm guessing. But this this location is very vulnerable to pummels. And he doesn't have uh, much mechs on the ground to so contest the mech destroyers either. So you can push up with the anti-air mobile. I'd love to see like two pummels come out of here because it's just it, it snowballs out of control be so difficult for him to defend it. The bombers won't be able to do it. Nope. You'll have nothing, he's only got one mech to strive. And then you'll lose these command centers. And they do do a bit of damage, because he hasn't got any armor on these. You see that uh, RVAs come over to help with the, uh, the fighters, which do an unexplainable amount of damage to their counters, like AA mobiles. Um, decent to the mechs as well, with no armor. See that red evil here is trying to send over some air to help, but he's on patrol and he's running into RV's big brain sensor boys. Raphael has mined out his uh, section of the island. And he can't get into no man's land for these trees. I'll do with the two control groups then. Might see wind start to push up. Yeah, he's stabilized now, and he's he's got these production buildings down. He's trying to, try to sneak this fort up. Hopefully, unholy does not find that. He does look like he's he's angled to go round and look for windows to do damage. Wind is T four. Don't know if he's maybe getting the uh, the turret upgrade now. Probably, absolutely, the map to to be getting the turret upgrade on. 
I'd love to see people land on these islands and grab the resources. I think that'd be pretty cool. Got the skirmish here in Canada clone space. There's the pummel, so they weren't going to go for it. It's just everything's ruined. It's spoiled the cool push. Oh, a lot of workers going down. See, they will perpetually try to send units to help, but they're still fast fighters and not enough of them. He's got like five air bases now, though. It's got a decent amount of resources left over as well. Are we sending some resources over to Raphael? Don't think you should do that. <laughs> he says it's excess now, but very soon it's he's gonna have nothing <laughs> at all. It's like um like a bright candle. He's got to win this game before he burns out because they're gonna run out of uh of everything of carbon. He should be trading his car. Like, you need to get some trade set up. Like, if you get trade, at least you can buy resources for the rest of the game. You create a nova out of nothing. Eventually, it pays itself off. They could have a very good uh, trade line going at the back of the map here, on the edges of each of these islands. And get that fort up. It's a smart fort. Grab all this carbon. Look, contests that carbon, secures this carbon. Resources are, are everything here. They're all going to get caught by the air. Uh... Forts do pretty decently against there, though. GG. Looks like casual clones had enough. Not getting enough help. T4 air is so up. Well, kind of is, but on this map, it's it's much more exaggerated. RV is saying it's the vision. It absolutely is the vision that he's built on this map. This web of sensor boys. He sees the entire center of the map. He sees everything. He can see it all. He can see where it comes. And if they patrol, they get slowed down. Try to help. This is why someone needs to build a fleet of destroyers and anti, well, anti-air destroyers. Patrol the map and clear out the sensor, boys. What a rich meta we would have on the islands if it was played with more often. But in the end, the maps would probably always just out of sync because of Gungans being broken. There's RBA getting onto the other side of the map now, into the uh, the old slow push from wind. You can see there's some uh, decent range artillery on the way. We've only got that plus one, not got the plus two quite yet. But it's uh, it's more than enough to outrange these boys. I think everyone's just keen to fold at this point. There's a lot of air from red now. Huh? I love watching this. You're a race that gets speeders and you're hitting the assault mechs with your advanced fighters. Please build speeders. You have a fort. Please do it. This could be such an easy push for them. If that's how he's going to defend with assault max. They both got the same amount of air. Same upgrades. Only difference is one of them might have research tracking or something like that. Or some of the little accuracy things. 
But they could definitely clear a window and make it a 2v2. I mean, Raphael's not much of a player in this instance because he doesn't have any resources. <laughs> he's got he's got RV building him boats <laughs> to trans transport his army across the map. I like it. Maybe if they land in Red's base, it'll be uh, it'll be painful. They'll probably get away with this too because they've got all the the vision. They can see everything. They can uh, plot a safe course across the map. That's a nice, efficient patrol right there. Skilled pilots. It looks like he's going to give it an escort as well. He's taking this position now, so he's going to get all that resources. Look at all that Nova he's going to grab up. That's awesome. There's even some trees as well. That's nice. wind calling in for some air support. He wants a military strike on this location. Make some mounties, says never stand still. There we go. Here's the speeders that we talked about. You heard me. Look how quickly these go down. There's only defense here. He needs a RV to come and help him. There's a real danger of wind getting wiped off the map here. I know this is probably going to do an awful lot of damage, but I mean, this is preventable. It's kind of the wind condition in this game as well. Clearing this. Right. Here comes the grand landing. The Gungans have arrived. They're going to get some turrets down. Like a fort or some anti-air turrets. A shield generator. Okay. If you got down advanced turrets here, RVA could go and help wind. And then this is safe, and this is just free damage. There's nothing he could defend with. All you need is turrets. Please be a turret, thank you. It's not advanced though, is it? Pretty sure he could afford that now. He's missed our money bags. I can see that he's going, he knows this, this is his time. He must go. Feet must patrol in. He's got the turret to help now though. I mean, these units are in thing. Look at them. They're going for the ground forces. That's not a bad trade for red, regardless, though. Surprisingly. He needs more turrets. I'll take him off his ore as well. And grab that ore. Get on top of some of the units here that are pushing up too quickly. Oh, he's got his, he's got his own ant, advanced turret here, which is nice. Be able to hold for a while. Maybe we'll hold indefinitely. They may have fucked up here. You can see that uh, Unholy's pushing up. There's some mounties coming out from Wind, but Wind's in a really dire position because he's, he's had his like initial army lost. He's lost a lot of his um, sort of production that he had in the front here. He's got to deal with these, uh, these artilleries. And troopers are very cheap and cost effective, particularly from Wookiees. Very strong. It's another turret going up here. RV's got too much air now. I think they managed to snipe this turret. Now he's feeding uh, Raphael money. There's quite a bit of resources that they can steal from Casual Clone actually. So Raphael is not really out of this now. He can go and move up to that section of the map and mine all those, uh, the Nova, the ore, the carbon. Be a whole player again. RV is just like the British Empire here. He's just grabbing islands everywhere. 
coastal dominance. And there's a real danger that wind burns out of resources here. He's constantly asking them to help him and uh, he's not really getting much of it. That red quit. Oh, too much air. He gets cannons out and stuff as well. He's, he's switching to a trooper attack to help him reinforce this because if you think about how quickly you can make troopers, particularly as Republic, um, with such a small surface area, like three TCs is... Uh, Probably going to be more efficient than anything that your opponents can get down. <laughs> Load them up, they say. That's another five boats ready to deploy. So it's just unholy left now, so he's probably intent on killing wind. There's, there's, there's nothing really defending them other than this turret. Those poor, poor workers. Gunned down in the streets. Here comes the Air Force. Another turret going down. And another turret. He's just trade. <laughs> Where are these land units? Here they are. Where are they going to land? Where's the next invasion? But as soon as they land, he'll just quit. stops there. I mean at this point it's, it's done anyway. That was a pretty entertaining one though. I like the uh, the crazy maps like this. Um, so as I said I will try and do some sort of stream every Friday on YouTube. I'm thinking it'll be at about let's say 8 p.m. British summertime, GMT, whatever that is, whatever time it is in, in, in the UK. Uh, we'll do 8pm and we'll do it for like three or four hours and just go through like a bunch of replays or something like that and maybe there'll be some games and stuff. As always, if you want to play this game um, online, you can do it on voobly.com or gameranger.com. Um, both are alright. We tend to favour Voobly more because it's more like the old MSN gaming zone. There'll be links to those two in the description below. And as always, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.